Now, Nigerian lawmakers had publicly committed to donating 50% of their monthly salaries claimed to be 600,000 naira in order to combat hunger. However, an investigation by the Foundation for Investigative Journalism, that's the FIJ, revealed that their actual monthly salaries are significantly higher with the revenue mobilization allocation and fiscal commission, that's RAMFAC, setting it at 794,886 naira, and one lawmaker disclosing a monthly salary of 936,979 naira, 53 couple. Now, in addition to their substantial salaries, lawmakers also receive generous allowances and benefits, including accommodation, furniture, and medical allowances totaling around 5.9 million naira monthly. They also receive millions of naira as running costs without any guidelines on how to spend it. But despite reports of discrepancies, the House of Representatives has clarified that they remain committed to their pledge acknowledging a delay in implementation due to administrative procedures. They ensure that adjustments will be made to fulfill their commitment to donate 50% of their salaries, which is put at 600,000 naira for six months. And now to talk or discuss further on this, we have two guests on the conversation. We have Sam Ahmadi, Director, Abuja School of Social and Political Thoughts. And we also have Wale Oladakbo, Senior Program Officer, Center for Public Accountability. Uh, good, good evening, gentlemen, and thank you for joining us. All right, good evening, so Doshin, and good yes. evening, Nigerians. Yes, it's my welcome. pleasure to be here. <laughs> Welcome, Dakwa. It's, it's nice to have you. All right, so uh, Dakwa, My let's pleasure begin too. with you know the implications of the uh, Ramfak figures showing that lawmakers actually earn more than they claimed compared to the press release, you know, uh, by the House spokesman Akin Rotimi. What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, thank you very much, Dushin. You, you see, it, it's rather very unfortunate, but you know, the the, the Nigerian lawmaker, especially in the House of Reps, as it were now. It's just uh, playing to the gallery and, you know, attempting to pander to the opinions of uh, angry and hungry, hungry and angry Nigerians, as it were now. You know, you know, looking at the way the way the old thing is now, Nigerians are very angry and the, the House of Reps seems to want to, you know, pander to the opinion to say, OK, we feel your pulses and uh, we also want to join you in all of this and we are slashing our salaries. But of course, they've been caught like it will always happen in Nigeria. The figure they quoted is even quite different from the figure available from the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission. So to, to, to begin with, it shows clearly that the National Assembly itself, the House of Reps itself, is not even serious. But of course, and they've forgotten that Nigeria is not the Nigeria of 1999. So, Doctor, are, are you saying that you think that the House is downplaying their actual monthly salary? Going by the current figure available from the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission, that is even at the level of salary. But we know that the earnings of members of the House of Reps, in fact, of all their earnings, salaries, the salary is actually the smallest. However, Figuratively now, looking at it, and also from the angle of, you know, the optics, it looks like, yes, the, the Nigerian politician of the House of Assembly, House of Rep Extraction now, is trying to feel the, the pains of Nigerians. And they are saying, okay, we feel your pains, let's also see how we can tighten our own belts from here. You understand? Which is the yearning of an average Nigerian, that if... The leadership of the nation must say Nigerians tighten your belt. The tightening, the belt tightening measures must cut across. So the House of, the House of Bread is trying to say, okay, we are tightening our belts from our end. Nigerians, look at us, we are tightening our belts. For the optics of it, it is good. <laughs> For the optics of it, it is good. All right, now, but so breaking it down. Mm. You talked about, uh, you know, uh, the House of Reps playing to the gallery and also, you know, pondering on uh, to the opinions of 
angry and hungry Nigerians. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, the case of the uh, honorable member uh, who displayed his salary on a TV program. And he displayed, I think, a little over 900,000 Naira as what he earns monthly for basic salary. Uh, what can you say about that? And, uh, you know, will this affect the overall narrative of the house? Well, you, you see, to even begin with now, you begin to see different figures. Currently, what the House of Reps, the spokesperson pushed out, is that their salary is 600,000 naira. Now you have talked about somebody who displayed about 900 and something thousand naira basic. Mm. And then on the website of the Zoom Education Mobilization and Fiscal Commission, what we have is about 731,000 naira. Mm. So there are even discrepancies in the figure they are banded around as to want to slash. So if you cannot get the figure itself right, what else can we get right? However, like I said, however, the intention, the intention is a good one. And it is good for the body policy. It is good for, you know, it is good for, for the optics of it. It is good for what Nigerians currently go through to say, okay, if politicians can say, we are now willing to slash our salary. I'll be it for six months. I'll be it for six months. But we could say as long as this period persists, as long as Nigeria is saying, tighten your belt, we're going to slash your salary. So I am saying that this is also another reason for a new conversation on let us know how much the House of Rep member ends in total. This is also a call for a new conversation. However, sincerely, we must still give kudos to the leadership of the House for coming to this. Whether the figure is correct or it is not correct, that's another conversation. But, but it actually like said, matters, it, you know, especially to the hungry and angry Nigerians, if the figure is correct. Because if you're coming out to say that, you know, uh, you're earning this particular amount of money, and then you're slashing, you're taking half and you're, you're putting it, uh, you know, uh, you're putting it into the economy so that uh, to it, it can actually, you know, save uh, hungry Nigerians and all that. Then you need to come correct because aside that, we also know the allowances, you know, that actually earns them more money than their basic salaries. The lawmakers actually came out to say that, uh, that uh, especially uh, Uzo, Uzo Kwe uh, Ifanyi, he came out to say that, we are not just lawmakers, we are representatives of the people. So as representatives of the people, how can you justify, you know, the humongous monthly uh, amount that it's being paid you while many Nigerians struggle to survive on less than 500 Naira daily? You see, that's exactly what we're saying. The conversation on how much the average Nigerian politician ends has been on for long. And it's not one that will stop. It's one that should continue and that would continue. Especially if the press desires and conversations around it are kept on the table consistently and perpetually. We'll get there. That's exactly what I'm saying. We don't even know how much it is. We know of allowances that are legitimate. We also know of allowances that are not legitimate, that you can get from oversight. We don't know how much it is, but we, know that, but we oversight. know that it is way more than what is being paid now, even as a minimum wage. And we know how long it actually took for, you know, you know uh, for the government to come to a conclusion about, you know, paying uh, the Nigerian workers 70,000. Uh, it hasn't even been started. Uh, started yeah. yeah, it hasn't even started. They've not even started, you know, paying that yet. They're still on 30,000 Naira for some of the states. And even earning 600,000 Naira as it is, it's kind of, you know, uh, that, that is a lot. It is a lot, Doshin, and that's exactly what I'm saying. The conversation for the slash in a monument of our politicians has been on for long, and it has not stopped, and it is not stopping. Not even National Assembly members alone. Politicians across board, we have agitated severally that politicians be placed on the minimum wage as it applies to other categories of workers in the country, especially knowing that we have a bicameral legislature of that magnitude and number. So the discussion around the actual figure and slashing it mm. is on. But I am talking particularly about now. So the conversation should be rather that, okay, how much does a National Assembly member in the House of Reps, 
in total plus allowances. How much does a senator earn in total plus allowances? How much does a governor earn and other political office holders? You see several board members being, you know, appointed for various institutions of government. We don't even know what they earn. So the conversation should even be beyond the House of Reps. But what I am saying is that the House of Reps has also given us the direction to continue the agitation that Nigerians should know how much the political class in various offices earn. All right. Until we get to this conversation, mm. we might not even be able to pick the meat of the matter of flashing salary willingly or saying, I don't want to take what I should earn. This is kind of personal, a personal question, and this is what uh, some Nigerians, even during the protests, have actually been asking and complaining about, the fact that they feel like their leaders do not connect with them, do not understand what they're going through because, you know, uh, they're not in the same class or they don't earn as, you know, the same as they do. Uh, talking about unemployment as well, it's actually, you know, quite high in Nigeria as well. Now, but do you think, in your opinion, that lawmakers can truly relate to the hunger and poverty that they're trying to combat, you know, when they earn significantly more than the average citizen? You see, it is, it is, it is, it is obviously, obviously, it's not that bad. I mean, I cannot be understand. We, we don't, the average Nigeria that I fall in the category of live in a different land from where the political class lives and that's why policies will still largely elude the benefits of the average citizen hmm. okay. we seem not to patronize the same market by the huge disparity in the earnings and weight and the income structure where a councillor in the local government almost earns more than a professor in a university. So it, it, it is not just about the house of reps now, like I said, Richard. it is about the Nigerian people mm. rising and asking the right questions and now making sure that policies are made to make sure that salaries, wages, and emoluments of the political class is in tandem with the civil service structure. Okay. Until this demand is made and acceded to, we really, really might not be getting the meat of the matter. Okay, all right, Dako. Now, uh, so let's welcome Sam Mamadi. So, by the wages Samadhi. and the earnings of the political class in Nigeria are possible. All right, Dako. Let's now welcome Sam Mamadi. Hello, Sam. Good evening, and thank you for joining the conversation. Thank you very much. And good evening. All right, so uh, Dako has actually said a lot, and, uh, you know, he actually argues that uh, politicians should be placed on minimum wage. Uh, probably if they, if, if they are, they would actually feel the, uh, the pain and the suffering of the masses. Now, how does the disparity between the reported salaries of Nigerian lawmakers, you know, including the perks and the allowances, and also the economic hardship faced by ordinary citizens reflect a disconnect or lack of empathy from the lawmakers? Well, thank you for having me. But first, I, I don't think uh, we should put many people on, on minimum wage, actually. Uh, minimum wage is not, if you look at the segment of uh, um, uh, Nigerian workers who ought to be on minimum wage, and now we talk about living wage, mm. uh, usually it's a very small percentage. So basically nobody survives on minimum wage. I mean, we, as even in a gracious minimum wage, probably something like 120,000, that shouldn't be, with the devaluation of our currency and the inflation rate, that should not be what many customers, many workers should be added. I, I think that we should benchmark um, Nigerian legislators' salaries probably to the salaries of people like directors in ministries um, and so on and so forth. And, and again, the salaries are a problem. I've been a special advisor there. The problem is actually that if you look at the aggregate spend, expenditure, including the ones that go to the listeners themselves directly, uh, in terms of allowances, in terms of what they need to run their offices, they, 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 if you look at that, it's humongous. It's more than perhaps all you know parliaments in the world, as data show. We need to reduce that, and not just reduce it. If you look at the National Assembly work, it's not well-funded. Uh, uh, legislators complain, oh, they're not well-funded. But the legislators themselves are taking money and the work, the process for work is not being funded. 
I was a consultant to a special, a, a special house committee, made up of four committees. And I said, you should pay me for as a consultant. You couldn't pay me. They asked me to go and look for money from regulated entities that you don't need to collect money from. I refused. So I did that work pro, pro bono. But of course, I can't be very professional in pro bono work. So we need to fund the National Assembly work, but not fund legislators. That's number one. Number two, I think that if you don't fund, if you, if you overfund or if legislators make so much money compared with the people, uh, whether executive or legislator in this case, it creates a divide. The idea of democracy is that people should be embedded in the society they govern. And that's why it's difficult to find uh, few, million, few billionaires actually are in power across the world. Most people are in government in, across the world are middle class persons, professionals, who themselves have skin in the game, as we say it. So that means their wives shop in the normal market. So if you're talking about food inflation, they get they get hit themselves because their wives or their husbands, depending on who is involved, and their children shop in the normal market, go to normal school, go to the regular hospitals. And so because it, it, it incentivizes good performance. It incentivizes responsiveness to the people. The problem is that not just the salary, that by virtue of the perks of office and the ease with which public officials hijack public finance, whether through direct salaries and payments or through phony contracts, uh, uh, Talking about hi hijacking, hijacking, you know, this, uh, is, is that, can that be linked to, uh, you know, the secrecy shrouding the lawmakers' salaries and also the allowances and the reason why, you know, there's so much discrepancy and there's no transparency and accountability to Nigerians? I think it's good. I think it's also it's about secrecy. It's also about political economy. For example, if you look at the average budget of a Nigerian, Nigerian national budget. Everything goes to the elite. If you also look at issues like travel across the world, we see that you know when it's just travel, the, those uh, pay payments are universalized. But here it doesn't work that way. So I think it's general. It's public. It's general. It's not just about you know. Uh, it's general. It's not just about. Um, you know, secrets. Yes, yeah, those most are secret, but there's no accountability. For example, you can give them money for uh, oversight, but oversight money should be accountable. In the UK Parliament, you publish your account. You, you, somebody has been asked to leave the Parliament because he spent the money for his committee work, oversight work, inappropriately. Use it for private things, probably buy a shoe, buy a cap. So the point is that we don't have accountability. That's why I talked about money for work. Yes, they should be, they should be financed to do their work. But each of those funding is for work and should be open, retired, and published. So for the, if you say you have one, uh, 150 million uh, House Committee on Petroleum to do a public hearing, the expenditures, the cost of that public hearing, mm. the contractors you hire to do the, you know, the work, the, 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 everything has to be accounted for. And that's why we can say that this honorable member even campaign finance, for example, I have to go to court to get the court to order INEC to provide framework for campaign finance. Look at all the money people for per campaign. There is no framework for campaign. So how do you audit how much people spend that exactly. money? You know, money laundering. So I think there's a structural problem with, with the way the process for accountability, they should be paid, commensurate with, say, you know, directors or people in the public service and no frivolous or discretionary spending. Every money spent for that office by staffers has to be accounted for and published so that we can look at it and say that this man spent $5,000 in a hotel in London where he went for oversight for a meeting, and that spent is not frugal, and he spent it on something, maybe a girlfriend or a boyfriend, maybe a family member in the UK. Those things will be tracked, and those will constitute offences and could lead to removal from the parliament. So we need to understand that first, they're not laws. You see, our concept of people in power is what we call elected kingship. We fund them, we don't ask questions how much, so uh, a minister can donate 10 million to a book launch. Uh, when I was working with Chief Ghanifa with me, we have to go to court to, to sue when Babangida's wife set up you know, a pet project and state governors were funding with hundreds of millions. Today, you can see that happen. Because there's no sense, there's a sense that once we elect you, we give you the, the, the pocket, the purse, and give you the key to the, to the safe. 
you are free to use it all in the name of governance. But we have to change that. We have to put them on a good salary, commensurate with maybe directors, assistant directors in the civil yeah. service or allowances, and they do their work. They come on three days and do parliamentary business and get paid for those allowances. Because really, it shouldn't be an office that is economically so rewarding. Because okay. if it, it is, if it's, a, if it's a gateway to become a billionaire as it has become, then you weaponize the process of elections, then you criminalize the pursuit of votes. Yeah. And that's what we've got in Nigeria. Yeah. Because it's really an escape from poverty. People who have no work, people have no business, suddenly go there and become billionaires. Yeah. That's the problem we're facing right uh, now. Uh, uh, all right, let me, let me get back to you, uh, uh, Dark Bond. Now, uh, something he said, uh, something Sam said, he said, we need to pay uh, the, our leaders, you know, uh, an amount commensurate to, you know, directors and all that. Now let's try to pick up on some of the allowances that they are that they're being paid. Now let's start with the furniture allowance, you know, which is equivalent to three hundred percent of basic. That's their basic salary. Uh, that's over six million naira. Especially when many Nigerians lack access to, you know, basic furniture and shelter. Not to even talk of the schools, you know, especially in rural areas that lack basic access to, you know, furnitures and even shelter. Do you think that, you know, if everything is in place, like, you know, schools, if, uh, if uh, the masses actually have uh, houses that they live in, and without complaints, do you think that there will be so much thought on how much, you know, these lawmakers are paid for a furniture allowance? Well, thank you very much, Lucien. You see, the issue still revolves around institutionalizing what goes to the political class. Even if resources are available, and there are houses, there are furnitures in people's homes, the nation should have reserves. And excess money can be kept in the reserves mm -hmm. for future expenditure of the nation. This, this attitude of every four years, the same set of people come and they get furniture allowance, as if furniture is just a piece of car tire that is used regularly. Furniture can be in the, in, the, in the National Assembly for as long as 20, 25, 30, 40 years. Functional. It is unnecessary. Resources can be free and be used for other things. Expenses in any nation can never be exceeded at any point in time. And there could be emergencies like we had during COVID. So, it is also still part of the rot in the system that we run in Nigeria to continually give furniture allowance to lawmakers every four years, especially when it is the same people coming back. There are people who have been in National Assembly since 1999. That means they've collected furniture allowance four, five, six times for the same residents. Who does that? It is just because our nation lacks accountability. And this is part of the discussion that this conversation should be having mm. and that one Nigerian should be demanding mm. from the leaders. All right. That now, resources should not just be expended now, because it's available. Uh, 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 How much more when it is not available? All right, all right, Sam. Uh, you can hear that we're talking about you know resources not being expended but saved. And uh, I, I remember when there was a whole issue about the you know SUVs that was purchased for the lawmakers. Uh, you know, in 2023. Or about 360 SUVs, yes, that's worth 57.6 billion naira, you know. So what does that actually say? Because, you know, uh, there were calls of these SUVs, you know, being sold, you know, and uh, the old ones being used by the lawmakers that actually, you know, uh, came to power. Uh, there were so many calls about that, but the lawmakers still insisted that it's not for personal use that it is for work and nothing can be done about it. And like I said, over 57 billion naira was actually spent, you know, on these SUVs. Well, I think uh, it's a social problem, like I said. First, the other members will tell you that, oh, people in the executive, a common director, a common pump sec has maybe 10 cars, has all those privileges. So basically, they don't need it. You don't need to have a vehicle for duty. The work of a, a, a member is not, it's not a contractor. It doesn't go around 
you know, tough terrains, driving cars. He, even oversight, even oversight, it doesn't go to the field. It doesn't have to go to forests. He looks at documents. He, even if you go for oversight, they can hire those vehicles and take. So nobody should actually have those vehicles. Now, but look at what happened. They see it as a status symbol. And they'll tell you, and that's the point. These guys borrow money. These guys, you know, to come here, basically to make money. Now, the, the Nigerian concept of governance is corruption and is 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 institutionalized is official. Look at the presidents. All those things about the clinics, about feeding, how much is the budget? I worked in government, I was special advisor. I, I, I was a chief executive of and they used to tell me that look, okay, you don't travel, okay, you should get this. I didn't have those, I didn't have police escort, I didn't have DSS, nothing like that. As chief executive of a leading, you know, parasitic. Those things are necessary. But as a concept, there must be a theory of leadership. When they say the British uh, Prime Minister flies maybe BA or they say the Netherlands Prime Minister drives bicycle, the concept of leadership in those countries is that the leader is a servant of the people and they institutionalize it. You have to start with the governors, for example. The whole noise is about uh, executive votes. Are they not retirable? What's the security for 500 million every month? You use it and you, through text message, you say transfer to NECA, transfer to uh, this person, and later it says it's. it's, it's Security vote. That's so the, I agree with him. And the issue about furniture allowance, if you look at those furniture allowance, the National Assembly every four years scrapes away. I was a special advisor to Senate President many years ago. They scrape away all the furniture and, and they recommission Julius uh, Badger to come and recreate. So they, they, after four years, they say they have monetized. They give you back to buy at, at basement price all those. For, Wonderful furnitures, and they buy new ones. Who does that? Is the bureaucracy of National Assembly that awards this contract and takes huge payback from it? They're the ones who will put on the budget. We need to remodel. What are you remodeling? If you look at National Assembly's offices across the world, you see that the furnitures there are antiquated antiquated because they are designed to be old. You don't change tables and chairs. So it's clean, you come, you resume. But every four years, monetize. They give everything, flash televisions, big screen, split screen, you take, they buy new one. And that's why I'm not even too much concerned about the salaries. Yes, it's, 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 the depression is high with public service. But the cost centers where we're losing money is not, people say, number of uh, ministries. Yes, it's not important. Each ministry can be run with 10% of what they are running the ministries. Okay. I use my own example. When I was next chairman, I moved away from using the hotels. And we were able to save money to build a, 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 a nine story corporate headquarters with no borrowing. If we subject them to scrutiny and say, why do you have to get change the furniture? For what purpose? You can't. Okay. And it's not just the status. The contract, the civil servants in the National Assembly bureaucracy are worse than the legislators themselves. They're the ones who authorize and contract these things and share the benefits. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you so much uh, for that. Now, uh, let's hear uh, your final thoughts, uh, Dapo, in yes. one minute. Oh, sorry, 30 seconds. Well, like I said earlier, the, the, the profession of the, of the House of Reps on the accounting of their salaries should now generate another conversation on knowing what the average Nigerian politician earns. And you, the media, is being appealed to to take this matter up very seriously so that this conversation can go on and on in, a, in our quest for a new Nigeria going forward. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us and speaking to us on the conversation. Sam Amadi, Director, Abuja School of Social and Political Thoughts, and Wale Oladakbo, uh, Senior Program Officer, Center for Public Accountability, CPA. We appreciate you for your time. Thank you very much. Well, while Nigerian lawmakers hesitate to donate a fraction of their salaries to fight hunger, millions of citizens struggle to find their next meal, and some are still out protesting. This highlights the stark contrast between the country's leaders and the people they serve. But until the government addresses the systemic issues driving poverty and hunger, the people will remain skeptical of their leaders' commitment to change. <laughs>